Another overarching planning theme that uh, we're working hard to address is this issue of north and south of the Midway. Um, so I, I've, I, again, I, I had been told that this is uh, the tundra and that it's a barrier that people who are in the largely professional schools um, south of the Midway feel very isolated, that really you feel like you're not on the campus unless you're north of 59th Street. So this photograph from the top of Rockefeller Chapel looking south, I think helps to illustrate one of the challenges there. So not only has the south of the Midway been used historically for uh, freestanding professional schools, so that limits uh, the kind of destination, the type of activity that happens there. Um, but it's been developed in a kind of almost suburban approach to land use. So you have these you know, two, three uh, story buildings that aren't visible from the north. So when you're standing on the south side of the Midway looking north, you see Rockefeller Chapel, you see the towers of Harper Memorial Library and the Medical Center. But conversely, when you're standing on the north looking south, you see vast open, you know, you, you see the trees and not much beyond that. And so it, it, I, I found this somewhat humorous, but also clearly indicative of the challenge. Uh, when I would tell people um, on, uh, you know, we're working with on projects that, uh, or try to encourage them to think about going south of the Midway, that the distance between 60th Street and 59th Street is exactly the same as the distance between 59th Street and 58th Street at the center of the quads. They really didn't believe me until I took out the map and put the scale on. And you can see that it is indeed the same, but there's a, there's a psychological distance. There's, there's nothing to draw your eye, so you think it goes on forever. You're crossing the Midway Plaisance uh, boulevards as well as the parkland itself. And so uh, through a series of projects, uh, we've been working to address that because, frankly, south of the Midway is a huge opportunity for us to continue to build out, uh, you know, to achieve our initiatives without having to acquire more land. Uh, this is a, a map and some thumbnails of projects that have taken place over the, uh, the last five, six years south of the Midway to ad address one of the concerns. So historically, you know, the uh, Social Services Administration, the Law School, Harris School of Public Policy. Um, actually, I, I've, in the architectural circles, I've referred to this as the uh, uh, march, of, uh, march of modernism on the Midway. Um, you've got these great in individual gems, or some may argue not so much gems, but individual uh, works of architecture that have their address on the Midway. They turn their backs to the South and they have nothing to do with each other. And so, and they're not campus-wide destinations. So by creating a new 800-bed uh, undergraduate residence hall just south of Burton Judson that opened in 2009, uh, the Logan Center uh, that opened a couple of years ago, and I'll talk about a few more projects. It's, one of the issues is a critical mass, you know, that it, there has to be enough going on there that it begins to feel like a campus. And then as we build it out and think about the open spaces there, we can start to address the fact that the, um, the buildings feel independent and disconnected and try and bring them more together.